Hello students, in this video we'll discuss the definition of convergence of a sequence of numbers. Let's recall that a sequence is a mapping from the natural numbers to R. And typically we'd write this as A of N, or as more typical, we write it as A sub N. So for example, we'd have this. That's our notation. We would have A1, A2, A3, A4, et cetera, going on forever. And we can also see it in this notation. We can write this as brackets A sub N, where N goes from 1 to infinity using the counting number. So all of these are just different notations for what, how we write down what a sequence actually is. Now here comes the definition. What does it mean for a sequence to converge? We have a good intuition for what this should mean, but let's formalize it. Here's our definition. We say that the sequence, let's use one of our notations, a n, n goes from 1 to infinity, converges to a real number, a, if, if what? If for every epsilon greater than 0, there is an n, which is a function of epsilon, and this n is a natural number, so this is a natural number, such that if n is bigger than or equal to this n of epsilon, then the absolute value, the distance, from a n, from any of these a n, where n is anything larger than the n epsilon, minus a is less than epsilon. So a n is within epsilon units of the value a, provided that little n is any natural number that's larger than the prescribed n epsilon. So that's a lot to digest. All we're saying is if I want to be so close to the value a, every term in the sequence past that value needs to be larger than a certain threshold. So for example, we can imagine a situation like this geometrically. So if this is my value a, and you have a1 over here, a2 over here, maybe a3 is over here, a4 is over here. If we're going to converge to a, these values have to be getting what? Have to be getting really close to that value of a. And so for example, this point over here might be a100. Maybe this point over here is what? Really close, that might be a 1,000, but those points, as n gets larger and larger and larger and larger, the values a sub a large number has to be very, very close to the value a in distance. So let's see an example of how we would actually prove something like this. So let's do a simple example. Here's our example. Let's show that the sequence a n, which is sine of n over n, converges to 0. Okay. So let's do some work and then write down the formal proof. So here's our work, our scrap work, our side work. We'll go over here. So what do we want? Well, my a, little a, is going to be 0, so I'd like, I want the sine of n over n to be less than some epsilon if n is bigger than or equal to n epsilon. Well, let's estimate this. The sine of n over n, sine is no more than 1, so this is less than 1 over n. And 1 over n is less than epsilon. I'd like that to be the case. I'd like 1 over n to be less than epsilon, because if 1 over n is less than epsilon, then our expression, the absolute value of sine of n over n, is also less than epsilon. 
So this is true provided by taking the reciprocal of this, n needs to be bigger than 1 over epsilon. Now the issue with choosing n epsilon, I can't just choose n epsilon to be 1 over epsilon because epsilon could be something like point, it could be some number where its reciprocal is not necessarily a natural number. So what we need to do is we need to ensure that this expression, I need n to be larger than 1 over epsilon, and the function over here to be a natural number. So we can do that by choosing the following. I can choose n epsilon to be the integer floor of epsilon. That just takes 1 over epsilon and finds the greatest integer that's less than or equal to that. And that might be less than 1 over epsilon, so I'm just going to add 1 to ensure that it's larger than 1 over epsilon. So this same thing over here is larger than 1 over epsilon. And this will work as our n epsilon. So this will be our choice. That is the side work. That's not the formal proof. The formal proof basically makes this choice from the outset and then proceeds with the proof. So here's our proof that it converges. Proof. Let epsilon be greater than 0. So I'm letting epsilon be greater than 0 for every. So I give you anything. I give you one particular one. I need to demonstrate the existence of an n epsilon. Then I can choose and epsilon to be the floor of 1 over epsilon plus 1. Great. And then let's suppose if little n is bigger than or equal to n epsilon, if this is the case, I would like to show that this is true. So if n is bigger than, bigger than or equal to n epsilon, which is the integer floor of 1 over epsilon plus 1, then n is bigger than 1 over epsilon. So if little n is bigger than 1 over epsilon, that says by taking the reciprocal of that inequality, that's epsilon, that epsilon is bigger than or equal to, bigger than 1 over n. Because this says that n is bigger than 1 over epsilon, so the reciprocal of that inequality states that 1 over n is less than epsilon. Great or epsilon's greater than 1 over n, same difference. And so now, what can we see? We can see the sine of n over n by our same inequality is less than or equal to 1 over n. And 1 over n is less than epsilon. So we've shown that for any epsilon that was given to us, we can choose an n epsilon so that the absolute value of sine of n over n is less than epsilon, provided that little n is bigger than the n epsilon. And that is the structure of the proof of convergence. Thank you very much.